From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. This is a WUFT News update. I'm Megan Porterfield. And I'm Zanella Savares. Thank you for joining us. Severe storms came to Florida this morning. Our campus cam caught footage of the intense clouds. It looked even more intense from ground level with the rain hitting campus. Some counties fell under a tornado watch and there were a number of severe thunderstorm warnings. Ashley Weinstein has been watching the weather closely all day. She joins us now from the Weather Center. Ashley, I almost got blown away by the storms this morning. What's happening? Yes, Megan, we did have a strong band of storms come into our area. Luckily, any severe threat has been gone since this afternoon, and that was due to this cold front that passed us this past afternoon. So we're going to see cooler temperatures in our area right now on our campus cam. It's a lot clearer than it was this morning and this afternoon, but still overcast. I would not rule out a shower or two this evening. Temperatures right now in our region, we're looking at the mid to high 70s, 77 in Gainesville, 79 in Stark, and 75 in Palatka. Tomorrow morning, again, that cold front, we're getting cooler and drier air behind that cold front that passed us this afternoon, and we're getting those northwesterly winds coming into our area, and so it's actually going to feel like fall for once. 61 in Gainesville, 64 in Ocala, and 63 in the villages, some areas not making it out of the 50s. We have this minor disturbance coming through our area tomorrow, and that's not going to be any sort of worry for a severe threat, but it will help motivate those northwest early winds bringing in those even cooler temperatures on Friday. Our high temperatures 72 in Gainesville, 75 in Ocala and 77 in the villages Our Halloween weekend planner. These temperatures for Saturday are for Jacksonville. If you're going to the big Florida Georgia game, the weather is going to be in our favor around kickoff time. It's going to be partly cloudy in the low 70s. And if you have post game plans, it will be in the low 60s and some high 50s in some areas. It's going to be great, but make sure you have a jacket with you and moving back into Gainesville for Sunday on Halloween. It's going to be sunny and beautiful by 3 p.m. We're looking at the low 70s and by 8 p.m. Your trick or treating hours are going to be quite crisp, so make sure your costumes are planned accordingly, which brings me to my six day outlook where there is a chance from that minor disturbance for a storm on Friday, but this weekend into the rest of early next week looking beautiful and fall like back to you. In state news, three Mira Martins are charged with the murder of their classmate. We get their support from our fellow CNN affiliate WPLG. The morning after a tearful vigil, candles continue to illuminate the parking lot of this Miramar apartment complex. Lord, we gather here today, Lord God, and a sad occasion, Lord God. Family, friends, city officials, and Miramar police consoling one another as a group of more than 200 gathered for a candlelight vigil to honor the life of 18-year-old Dwight DJ Grant. I'm upset and heartbroken. That such a good kid like the, the white lost his life so sister. His mother surrounded by the group as one by one we heard from those who say they knew DJ best. He was an amazing person. He had such a great personality everywhere he went. He always made people smile in the room. This group of nurses who worked with DJ's mother at Memorial Regional Hospital with a show of support for a teen whose life was cut short and for a mother who gave everything to try to provide her son with a better life. I know what your dream was for him, but I just want you to know that we are here with you as a family and we are not going to leave you. The vigil held just feet away from these bushes where DJ's body was found two days after he was stabbed to death by who police say were his classmates from Miramar High School. 17-year-old Andre Clements, 17-year-old Christy Parisian, and 16-year-old Jaslyn Smith, Smith charged. now charged as adults with his murder. A murder Miramar police say they planned with chilling text messages. But it was ultimately these surveillance images that put all three teens at the crime scene. DJ grew up knowing the Lord, and Lord, we can only pray that DJ is with you. The three students face charges of first-degree murder, tampering with evidence, and criminal conspiracy. Their court date is November 4th. Florida filed a lawsuit today against COVID vaccination requirements for federal contractors. Governor Ron DeSantis and Attorney General Ashley Moody announced the lawsuit. They say thousands of jobs are at risk at Cape Canaveral and elsewhere. This is the latest development in a series of conflicts between Florida Republican leaders and the Biden administration. 
In other news, Gainesville is celebrating Immigrants Day, which recognizes the city's 15,000 foreign-born residents. The celebration at City Hall recognized the work done to promote immigrant equity and inclusion. Immigrants make up nearly 10% of essential workers in the area's healthcare and food safety sectors. Members of the Gainesville Immigrant Neighbor Inclusion Steering Committee, known as GINI, have worked for about a year to improve immigrant access and safety in the city. The importance of linking today is just another opportunity to bring to light the importance of recognizing every community group that we have that makes up all of the neighbors in Gainesville. Through the Ginny Steering Committee's collaborative efforts, the city was awarded a grant to further support the immigrant community. We're just two days away from the big game in Jacksonville, and there are other Gator sports we're looking at. Maddie Camparisi joins us now with a quick look at sports. Thanks, Megan. Gator soccer gears up to host its season finale in the Diz tonight on a drenched Disney pitch. The orange and blue face SEC opponent South Carolina to end regular season play. Florida holds a 4-10-3 record, which puts them 10th in the SEC standings. Only the top 10 will make the conference tournament, which starts Sunday. Both men's and women's Gator swimming and diving will be competing tomorrow. The Gators take on the Georgia Bulldogs for their home opener. These two longtime rivals have competed a combined 82 times, and Florida leads the all-time series 60-19 in three. Meet time is set to start at 10 a.m. tomorrow in the O'Connell Center. Gator Volleyball hits the road to Columbia, Missouri this weekend. Mary Wise and her 10-6 Gators have another SEC battle this weekend. They are set to take on the Missouri Tigers for a single match at 6 p.m. on SEC Network Plus this Saturday. Florida looks to extend a two-match win streak. Gator football gears up for the annual game against Georgia and Jacksonville this weekend. As the Gators exit the bye week, they are set to take on another number one team this season in Georgia. The Bulldogs have vaporized their last five SEC opponents, 230-36. to Florida just recently fell to LSU in Baton Rouge, 49-42. to Kickoff is set for 3.30 p.m. on CBS. That's all for your sports. Back to the desk. Thanks, Maddie. And thank you for catching up with WUFT News on Facebook. I'm Megan Porterfield. And I'm Zanila Savars. Remember, your Florida news is always on at WFT.org.